this is Social Studies with Savannah, I'm part of the Croft Kids Club, and today my video is going to be on Dietrich Bonhoeffer, this guy, uh, as a video as part of my World War II theories. So as you can see, I'm in a different room. This is actually my room. Me, Gracie, and Piper all sleep in here. All the other kids are in the living uh, living room and dining room watching the Goofy movie and coloring. So I didn't want to bother them so I'm doing my video in here. So today my video is on Dietrich Bonhoeffer like I already said. He was a pastor during World War II uh, and he also became very political and, and was part of the resistance. Dietrich Bonhoeffer was born on February 4th in 1906 in Breslau, Germany. So that means that Dietrich Bonhoeffer was German di during the Nazi regiment. Um, and from 1923, well, okay, we're just gonna kind of skip over his childhood because there is a lot of stuff that he did during his adulthood and I didn't have enough time to say all the stuff that happened during his childhood. So we're just gonna skip to his college days. So from 1923 to 1927, Bonhoeffer studied theology at two different uh, universities, the University of Tübingen, or Tübingen, and the, Univers the University of Berlin. The University of Berlin, Berlin actually is where Bonhoeffer's father, Karl Bonhoeffer, was the professor of psychiatry and neurology. So that was why Bonhoeffer spent most of his time at the University of Berlin teaching and, and studying and he's, he didn't go very many use, years to the University of Tübingen. So at the University of Berlin, Bonhoeffer was heavily influenced by three historical theologians. So their names were Adolf van Harnack, Reinhold Seberg, and Karl Hall. So they were historical theologians that uh, Bonhoeffer thought highly of. But another man that Bonhoeffer thought very highly of and was very interested in his work was Karl Barth. And he proposed the idea of the th new theology of revelation. So basically a different way of thinking of theology, a different way of interpreting the Bible than the other people had done. Not saying that the other people were wrong or that the new people were wrong, but it was a different way of interpreting it. So, um, of course, some of the things that the old people say were wrong, some people, some things that the new people said were wrong, but this was just a different way of thinking. Uh, after Bonhoeffer graduated, Bonhoeffer served as an assistant pastor in Barcelona from 1928 to 1929. After this time period of him being assistant pastor, he spent a year as an exchange student in New York City. So he, uh, he went and studied theology at a Christian school in New York City. In 1931, Bonhoeffer became a lecturer slash teacher in, a systemat in systematic theology at the University of Berlin. When the Nazis gained power in 1933, Bonhoeffer became high, uh, very involved in uh, protests against the regimen, and he was especially uh, against anti-Semitism. So anti-Semitism, if you don't know, was the discrimination or mistreatment of Jews. So basically, a, a lot of what the Nazis were saying uh, was anti-Semitism. So like if you ever heard someone say Hitler was an anti-Semi or the Nazis were an anti-Semi, that means they were just against the Jews. From 1933 to 1935, Bonhoeffer served as a pastor of two small German congregations inside London. So I don't know, like, uh, let me back up. He was, uh, Bonhoeffer was highly involved in the German church. So he was he was 
uh, very involved in promoting the German church or uh, showing other people how the German church was struggling. So it's probably why he pastored German congregations in London because uh, they were away from the rest of the German church. So after his pastorship, Bonhoeffer became a leading spokesman at the Confessing Church. The Confessing Church was the center of the German Protestant resistance for, to the Nazi regimen. So everyone who was German and Protestant uh, was kind of part of that group, even if they weren't like technically like in the core of it or like didn't go to their meetings and stuff, technically they were kind of under the umbrella of the Confessing Church. So uh, one thing that the that Bonhoeffer and the Confessing Church believed was that the Nazis defined Jews solely on uh, blood or heritage. So if their grandparents and their parents were Jews, and that means the children were Jews, um, but so they were discriminated against even if they had converted to Christianity or some other religion. So even if they were Christians and technically their grandparents were Jews, the, they were not given the rights of Christians, they were given the rights of Jews. But Bonhoeffer and the Confessing Church believed that if a Jew had converted into Christianity or another religion, that they should be given the same rights as that religion. So that was something that while he was part, while he was a spokesman at the Confessing Church was something that he really pursued, I guess, was that they should be given the same rights. But Bonhoeffer also believed that none of the Jews should have been treated like the Nazis treated them, that he was very much against anti-Semitism and, and it, was, it made him really upset what the Nazis did to the Jews. But in 1935, Bonhoeffer became the headmaster of a new seminary for the Confessing Church in Fickenwald. So if you don't know what a seminary is, that's basically a school to train pastors. So it teaches them how to, how to preach, how to do studies, how to counsel people, um, how it uh, teaches them all about theology and prayer and confession and all the stuff that pastors need to know in order to become a pastor or maybe not a pastor, maybe like a teacher or something, but like in ministry where you're teaching other people and helping other people was where you, that was where you went was a seminary. So he became the headmaster or the teacher at the seminary and the seminary was hidden I guess or, disgu or disguised because if the, if the Nazis found out that it was like part of the confessing church they would have shut it down. So it was eventually shut down in 1940 where it became too dangerous but it was it was running for a long time and many uh, past uh, students became pastors. So the three main things that Bonhoeffer taught on was prayer, private confession, and common discipline. During this time where Bonhoeffer was teaching, he wrote several studies uh, or books. So I was going to, at the end of this video, like maybe he wrote five or six books and I was just going to do like this is a book he wrote, this is basically the meaning, but he wrote over 163 books in his entire lifetime, and I don't have enough time to, to, to list out every single book and do a short overview of it. That would be like a whole video by itself. So you just get to know that there are 163 books that Dietrich Bonhoeffer wrote. If you want to look online, that's fine with me. Uh, so, 163 books. That is a lot of books. <laughs> I was very surprised. Um, so Bonhoeffer became very popular for his contrast against other pastors. So I said about Karl Barth, uh, he was, a lot of his theology was against what the other pastors believed. Uh, a lot of his views were close to pacifism in some areas. So, um, 
pacif pacifism was just a, a belief, I guess. It was still Christian, most of it, but it was just a different denomination, I guess. Um, though Bonhoeffer's views were different, many people believed that he was right, and when they read the Bible, they thought, well, this kind of matches up. And even people today, like pastors and theologians, they believe that what Bonhoeffer believed was true. So, in 1931, Bonhoeffer was appointed to be the Europe European Youth Secretary of the World Alliance for Promoting International Friendship Through the Churches. He was the secretary there. <laughs> so, one of the things Bonhoeffer tried very hard to do was to show the rest of the church, the body of Christ, I guess, how the German church was struggling. So, I, because Hitler was um, changing a lot of the beliefs, and so he was trying to show the rest of the church, like the people who weren't in, in Germany, how they were struggling. Um, he found a sympathetic adv advocate that helped him show how the German church was struggling in J.K.A. Bell, and J.K.A. Bell was the Bishop of Chichester, England. So Bonhoeffer's own involvement, like his own, uh, let me think, his own resistance against Hitler and the Nazis became very political in 1938 when the jurist Hans van Dahne, Dahne, yeah, uh, who was also Bonhoeffer's brother-in-law, introduced him to a, to a group seeking Hitler's overthrow. So uh, when in 1938, his brother-in-law introduced him to a group that was seeking to either overthrow the Nazis and the Germans or um, basically like assassinate Hitler. So, uh, of course, if he was part of this group, that was very dangerous for him. So Bonhoeffer set out a uh, refuge in 1939, so he traveled to New York, but returned two weeks later telling his sponsor that he could not be, that he could not be happy there because he felt like he needed to be part uh, with the German church. Also in 1939, Bonhoeffer and von Dahani helped a group of Jews escape to neutral Switzerland. So they basically planned a escape party for a group of Jews to go to New Switzerland, which was not part of the war yet. So Bonhoeffer, interestingly, he got a job at the German military intelligence department. So that was the military intelligence of the Nazis, which I thought was funny was it was actually the core of the resistance so a lot of the stuff that was happening in the resistance was taking place in the nazis german intelligence department okay uh in 1942 bonhoeffer flew to sweden uh to convey the british government to a peace treaty so they wanted to to end the war and make peace so the allies and the germans and them wanted to make peace but the their plan to make a peace treaty was thwarted i guess by the allies unconditional surrender policy which means if they surrendered there wasn't anything they had to do like if they made a peace treaty the allies wouldn't have to do anything but apparently bonhoeffer's peace treaty had the allies do something for the german or give them something so, but, so they couldn't be part of that peace treaty. Uh, uh, just a year later, Bonhoeffer was arrested in 1943 and imprisoned. This was around the same time that he got engaged. So, following the failure of the assassination on Hitler in 1944, so they tried to assassinate Hitler but failed, the group that, Hit that Bonhoeffer was part of, the Germans found documents leaking Bonhoeffer directly to conspiring for the assassination. So the the spies, I guess you could call them, found documents that had Bonhoeffer's name on it, 
or or it had Bonhoeffer's writing that that linked him directly to the assassination. So he was most definitely part of conspira conspiracy for the assassination. This eventually led to Bonhoeffer's interrogation, interrogation, which led to his execution. So Bonhoeffer was executed in prison. Uh, as I told you a little bit ago that Bonhoeffer got engaged before he got in prison, so technically he was never married. Um, he had gotten engaged before his imprisonment, and they, him and his, his fiance never got married. And technically, you could say, well, they were technically kind of married, but they got engaged right before he got into prison. So he was there for a couple of years, and they didn't see each other maybe once or twice. So, this is all of the stuff I have for you today. Remember to like and subscribe this video. Oh, and this book I have. This is called Dietrich. This is by the Heroes of the Faith. Dietrich Bonhoeffer, opponent of the Nazi regimen. I would say, just in, like, my preferences, this is not for younger children or children who have a hard time reading because half of the book is Dietrich Bonhoeffer's sermons and part of his books. Um, a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of it is about theology and stuff because he was in prison for a couple of years. And so basically the whole time he was in prison, he just wrote books and studies. So but this book was really good. I really liked it. Um, I read it a couple of years ago, well, maybe last year, but I would get it if I wanted to know more about Dietrich Bonhoeffer. So, remember to like and subscribe to this video, to watch my other videos and all the other kids' videos, to stay tuned for more videos, um, and never stop learning!